Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Meshuga. All right. If you're not familiar with Meshuga, you're in for a treat. The band Meshuga is from Sweden and they're considered a gent band. Gent music is primarily rhythmic based. We're not really concerned with chords. We're not concerned with specific scales, though they tend to use a lot of diminished scales. The band Meshuga is kind of a sonic enigma, right? When you listen to their music, you can feel the pulse and then you lose the pulse. And there's some songs where you can't even find the pulse. But the funny thing is, a lot of Meshuga boils down to just what's called syncopation, which is essentially where you take a rhythmic pattern and instead of accenting the strong beats like one, two, three, four, you accent the weak beats like the ands, or maybe you'll throw accents on the es or the uhs. And depending on the breakdown of the subdivision, it's specific to that personal song. But the idea here is that we're going to investigate and demonstrate what Meshuggah does and how to look at it and how to hear it and how to, how to count it. So let's get started. Meshuggah's use of syncopation is what gives their sound that crazy, dizzying, can't dance to it, can't find the one kind of vibe, right? A lot of what Meshuggah does can in fact be boiled down to 4-4. In fact, most of what their drummer does is in 4-4, which is another very interesting aspect of the total sound of Meshuggah is that you're dealing with the drummer who's the timekeeper playing in 4 but the rest of the band is doing these multi-layered complex rhythmic patterns on top and essentially what's happening is we're, we're creating it's almost like the band itself is a giant polyrhythm because you have the guitars and bass doing crazy odd times above the drum beat which is in 4-4 four, four. and the reason it works so well is because at the end of the cycle as both voices rhythmic voices are going along at the same time even though they're doing different things at different times and one's in 4-4 four, four and the other one might be in like 25-16 for example you're gonna end up at the end of that cycle back on the one and then it repeats so these guys have almost literally created their own genre of rhythmic music. Right? Let's take a look at a song called Demiurge. It's in 4-4, four, four, both for the drums and the guitars. It's essentially a repetitive rhythmic pattern, but using different notes. Now, I'm not gonna be analyzing the chords or scales or intervals of Mashoga, that'll be for a different video. This is strictly the rhythm, strictly the time signatures, the syncopation, etc. So Demiurge is in 4-4 four, four across the board. We're using a 2 sixteenths beamed with an eighth rhythm over and over and over and over while the notes themselves change. Let's take a quick listen to this. <laughs> One, two, three, four. 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 So there, in just that short span, you heard the beginning part, which was just very repetitive in four, and then you had the section right here where things get a little jumbled, right? And then a lot of bent, bent notes. So they're using the framework of 4-4, the passage of time, right? But they're manipulating the notes to come in. There's a lot of 16th notes used in, in this band's writing. There's a lot of dotted notes which extend the note value longer and if you put those things in strange places you get stuff that sounds like this but as you can see we're still in four the song do not look down is another good example of the drummer and the overall flow of the song itself being in four being able to be counted in four but you're not gonna feel it in four unless you really really try 
to count it in four. So let's listen to it without the counting. Here we go. So not only are the guitars playing on downbeats, upbeats, and everything in between, all mixed, every measure is different. There's no like riff, right? Enter Sandman has the Enter Sandman riff that's replayed over and over and over. This stuff is not set up like that at all. It's four or five, six, eight, ten measures where it's the same theme sort of like rhythmically, but like they're changing the position of the notes. Things are coming in in weird spots. They're they're modulating the the timing from section to section. This is very. I, I'm trying to get this idea across to everybody without having to make a 65 minute video. Okay, this is some intense stuff on a metric modulation syncopation math kind of level. This is just the idiot's guide. Okay, I'm hoping to make sense of things here. So, all right, with the counting. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. So what makes this so cool? Some of the some of the the one beats on these measures, some of them have a note, some of them have a rest, some of them have like a China snare hit. It's different every time. It keeps you it, it's like dizzying. Like you don't know where gravity is at the moment you're just floating in in chaotic beauty right so there's another example in 4-4 let's see what else I can come up with here one of my favorite Meshuggah songs of all time is called Rational Gaze and this is an example of one of those songs where the guitar and bass are doing crazy odd times while the drums are just keeping it down in 4-4 the beginning here and again, this is super complex, so I'm not gonna go in depth. I don't want this to take my whole day up. I don't want you to have to sit here and watch this for hours. So I'm gonna tell you what's going on, and then we're gonna go through it, and hopefully you'll glean something from this. The beginning of Rational Gaze has five measures of 2516. Now that's really hard to count at, at the speeds Meshuggah plays. And then after that five measures of 25, 16, there's one measure of 316, okay? So the note getting the beat is the 16th note, making it very noty, very fast. All right, so while the 25, 16 and 316 are going on, you have the drummer in 4-4. Four, four. And the reason it works is because the craziness of the guitar part mixed with the simplicity and timekeeping function of the drumming in 4-4 four, four, will eventually meet up at the end point of the cycle and then return back and repeat. So it's kind of like you have two people getting in their cars from the same location going to the same location but they're both going to take different routes. They're both going to end up at the same location hypothetically right hope that makes sense so let's just listen to this we'll do some four four counting one two three four 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 and again those bass and guitar notes that riff that pattern it's it's literally two notes right it's six open are we in six here we got six strings yes six open and six thirteen so i hope this is all making sense to you guys let's see what else we can find here this older material like say off of destroy erase improve is a little more cutting edge is a little more guttural it's definitely more thrashy okay i love that album one of my favorite albums of all time is destroy erase improve on that album you have a song called soul burn and soul burn always before I truly understood how music worked decades ago, I was always really like drawn in by this rhythm. So let's take a listen to Soul Burn here just so you know what I'm talking about. Cheers.
I don't know what's else more awesome, the, the riff or the drum beat. And then once he comes in with the vocals, it just gets even more dizzying. So this is actually, in a lot of ways, a little bit easier to grasp. It's in 6-4, right? So let's, let's count our way through. Now, 6-4 implies that we're dealing with six quarter notes, right? The quarter note gets the beat. We're dealing with a lot of dotted eighth notes for this particular song. So let's count our way through. I'm going to count it one and two and three and four and five and six and here we go. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and so there you have an example of a Meshuggah song actually in an odd time cross the board in 6-4 for Soul Burn. All right, we got one more thing I want to look at. And this, this next song, I don't particularly like this next song, but it's chock full of actual time signature changes. So I wanted to go through this one. Whether we're looking at the drums or the guitar, the time signature is the same. All right, so we are talking about the song I, which it's very fast, as always. I think we're on a seven string for this one. So we're going to be counting through seven, eight, six, eight, five, eight, two, four, six, eight, and so on. First, let's give it a little bit of a listen. It's a little bit tedious, but here we go. Kind of reminds me of like Slayer and Dream Theater had a baby got the ridiculously heaviness of Slayer with the metric madness of Dream Theater. All right, so let's let's count our way through this. So let's count our way through. I'm going to try to do this without passing out. Here we go. One two three four five six seven. 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 One two three. Four, five, six, seven, one, two, three one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven one two three four five six one two three four five six seven one two three four five one two three four five six seven one two three four five and so on you get the point it's like the most boring version of the dance of eternity by dream theater you could ever imagine again not a big fan of the song but i just wanted to go over the crazy time signature so i hope you guys learned something we talked about syncopation we talked about how the guitars will play in odd times where the drums will play in standard 4-4. Four, four. They will meet up at the end of the cycle and they will repeat and the math always adds up. And the reason you can't freaking find the one most of the time is because of the syncopation and also it's just a phenomenal art form. I, I love these guys. A lot of people are probably turned off by the brutality and sheer evilness of the sound. But if you can get past the color of it and just literally take it in for what it is on a rhythmic level, it's super cool stuff. In the future, at some point down the road, I do want to investigate the harmonic aspects of Mashuga. So if you liked this video, please like it, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know you're still here, please. And thank you all for watching.